Hello everybody, it's Jamie, as you all know from Old Shipping Lines, and today we're talking about the project called Fred. Now, I did this earlier in a stream, and when I was watching the stream, it was just bad. I mean, it was lagging, it didn't fit right, it didn't watch good. And because I want this to succeed so badly, I try, uh, I wanted to make... I made a video of it basically. Um, if you see some black parts on my screen on YouTube, with my screen recorder that I have, for some reason it uh, doesn't fill the whole, the whole screen. So I'm sorry, but let's try and I hope you enjoy this. So if y'all remember uh, these last few days, there was a teaser trailer on uh, my YouTube channel called Fred. Now I have it right here, so if you haven't seen it, we can watch it right now. So let's enlarge the screen. I hope you can hear this, otherwise I will be upset. So this is the video or the teaser trailer that was shown on my YouTube channel. But if we move back a little bit right here, we will get in a second, by the way, who this is in the series, this young man or the movie, I should say. Um, but let's just take a moment to look at the Titanic behind this fine man. So if we, we, we can see the Titanic clearly, um, it's a little bit faded. So, um, the documentary talks about the lookout Frederick Fleet, which is this fine man right here. Now, Frederick Fleet was the lookout on the RMS Titanic, who famously said, Iceberg right ahead. He survived the sinking, but uh, later, sadly, he died at the age of 77. He took his own life, he hanged himself. But we will read that a little bit in the article later. But, uh, like I said, the Pixel, the Titanic is a little bit faded in the back. So, which means for me that this is maybe a flashback of Frederick Fleet. Um, but can we just take a look at the Titanic itself? Uh, even though it's a little bit faded. Um, it's an amazing model. I mean, when I for firstly saw this, I was so hyped right away for just this uh titanic model at the end um it looks amazing i mean there are many projects or many documentaries of the titanic where the ship looks like shit and first impressions when i see we see it with this it doesn't seem the case at all so i'm extremely hyped for this now if we move back from this um uh, we go to the director's statement so uh, i will not try i will try not to butcher any of these words but if i do i'm sorry but uh let's read so on april the 15th 1912 the unsinkable rms titanic sank 12 600 feet to the bottom of the atlantic ocean taking the lives of over 1500 people among only a few survivors and crew, 25-year-old lookout Frederick Fleet manned rescue boat 6 to safety. And this is his story, plagued with undealt PTSD and shame. If Frederick Fleet had shame, I, I wonder why, because um, there are... It isn't its fault in any way, in my opinion. I mean... He, the iceberg wasn't as good to see. I mean, it wasn't good to see. I'm trying to make works up. But anyway, um, in my opinion, you shouldn't have felt shame if you had any. So let's continue. Fred lived to the grow down, 
li Fred lived to the grand old age of 77 before unfortunately taking his own life in his late 60s at a time when mental health was rarely discussed and never diagnosed. Fred dealt with a dark, unconscionable demon most of his life, which is quite sad. Growing up, we've always been gripped by real people and real stories, like the film Apulquito, Saving Private Ryan and Titanic. These films shaped the kind of stories which we wanted to tell. People are often intrigued by the mystery of historical events and the piercing, piecing together of an untold truth. Constantly digging to find an answer or unearthing a fact has become the driving force behind us as storytellers. After 12 months of extensive research, we finally developed a clear vision for telling Fred's story, taking inspiration from Rose Glass, Saint Maud and Robert Edgers the Witch. We are focusing on obscurities and darker nature of what Fred dealt with these last weeks of his life. The last weeks of his life, sorry. We all want to you we all. So just before I continue, my English is shit. So if I make some mistakes, I'm very sorry, but um uh, I'm not English as first language, so I'm sorry. Uh where were we? We want to use key F VFX and in-camera techniques to paint Fred's disordered perception of the world. Slow exposure, drop frame motion and the use of silhouettes and shadows. Silhouettes and shadows we shall get back later. We shall talk about it later. Yes. There is no doubt Fred's story falls into a dramatic category, but we've always felt Fred's condition has significant elements of horror and delusion. Fred experienced something generally horrifying and lived with the aftermath all his life. We've no doubt, we've no doubt relieving those memories would be terrifying and we don't want to shy away from that. As its core, we want our film to accordingly re accurately represent someone who has experience something devastating and how it shaped his life so this shall be a short film um, i don't know how short but i hope 20 25 minutes it would be perfect if it's 30 minutes uh, that would be perfect for me but if it's less it's fine by me i mean i'm extremely hyped for this also because this isn't a story we've heard of that much and with other survivors of the titanic they have amazing stories that we read in books but we never actually see in documentary or movie so that this is specifically a short movie of only fleet it just hypes me up so um if we go to their main page this we saw this video uh, the, f the film or the movie is recorded by franklin and marchetta which will Go back to a little bit later. So uh, we will read this as well. Um, one of the most known catastrophe disasters in human history leaves an old man with nothing but delusion and the haunting memories that plague him. So we shall now read this. Predominantly set in 1965 Southampton, we meet Fred. A solo man in his late 70s. From the off, we see Fred burying his late wife, Eva. With no friends and little family, he lives with his brother-in-law, Philip, who today tells Fred that he has to move out. Which is kind of mean just to kick somebody out after his wife, your sister, died. But again, I don't know much of his personal story. Philip, an eerie, unlikable character, makes it clear Fred is no longer welcome at the house. With his looming rejection always, only days away, 
Fred is thrust back into a state of constant flashbacks and unwanted memories. Through these flashbacks we learn Fred was a lookout on board the RMS Titanic and the first to spot the iceberg that fatally struck. Memories from that night Memories from that night and the chaotic aftermath trigger a severe mental illness in Fred, also known as PTSD. Pushing these, pushing these thoughts to the back of his mind, Fred makes one last attempt to rekindle an estranged relationship with his daughter, Dorothy. With a husband who works for long hours, two young children and managing a busy house. She doesn't hide the fact that she has little time for her father. So, for a man then, like Fred, who has PTSD, to hear that your own daughter, or to know that your own daughter doesn't have time for you, it's sad to hear. I mean, I would never do that, but it's me. Okay, so where were we? Yes. Fred exchanges pleasantries for a short while before realizing he outstayed his welcome. He says his goodbyes and makes a real makes a quick getaway. The film cultivates with Fred's flashbacks and pressing trauma growing stronger and more vivid by the hour. Finally forcing Fred to the point of no return and him making a devastatingly sad decision. So the uh, studio or the producers who actually made this will make this uh, documentary or short movie is called Fred the Film. Uh, that was something I forgot to tell you. Um, so, if we now go to the why and why now, it explains it very well. While mental health is very much at the forefront of current, of current debate, our film is not a self-help manual on PTSD, not a step-by-step -step guide on how to avoid it. So very important, their short movie is not right here a step-by-step -step guide on how to avoid it. In fact, this is a harsh look at the reality it can create ignored. Any person, any color or creed can be affected by it and once its grasp takes hold, it can become a deep, dark void of which feels impossible to climb out of. Not only that, but the origin of our protagonist, PTSD, came from one of the most widely known events in human history, the tragic sinking of the RMS Titanic. The Titanic is undoubtedly the backdrop against which our film is set, but, it, but not its primary focus. This is a more accurately a story of a man who boarded it. British sailor and lookout Frederick Fleet. While the, most, while the world most certainly knows of the Titanic, the world does not know of Fred, being the official lookout. Which, when I read this first... Work with me, please. When I read this first, I didn't know that the world does not know that he was the official lookout. So that was something new for me. Fred was first to see the iceberg that fatally collided with the Titanic. Subsequently, he's a man the world has forgotten. Fred was a dedicated seaman working on ships of varying sizes and importance, more importance most of his youth. But the unfortunate events of April 15, 1912 stayed with Fred the rest of his days. Seeing him meet a tragic end Blame and ridicule seemed to follow him after the night of April 15th, along with a dark growing on recognized pain, the PTSD. The only thing Fred was ever truly guilty of was being born in a time when mental health was something unspoken of, which I agree with 100%. We want our film to be an honest representation of someone who experienced something devastating and how that shaped his life. 
at the time when soldiers are returning home from being exposed to abhorrent situations, dealing with trauma is something that should be treated as prosecutively as another life-threatening condition. Agreed. The, unfort the unfortunate fact is on dealt with trauma was the reason Fred met his bitter end. So I agree with this 100% that the only thing he was ever truly guilty of was being born in a time when mental health wasn't yet a thing. And can you imagine, or we can't imagine, that uh, you survived the Titanic, which l you hear screams of people dying, you, you hear the ship cracking, you hear everything. And the trauma that leaves is humongous. Then you come home. And you feel ashamed and you you have these PTSD attacks and you have no one to talk to. I mean, if in these days, uh, for example, the war in Iran or Iraq, if a soldier had PTSD, he couldn't... Well, if a soldier had PTSD, he could talk with a doctor when he got home, if he wanted to. Imagine... That not, that not being there. Fred didn't have that. Which is extremely sad and lonely. So. I agree with this whole article. 100%. Now let's move to the next page. And that is concept artwork. Which I'm particularly most hyped for. So we're going to go through all this one by one. Examining them theorizing them so take a drink because this will be a long video i think so let's begin with this one right here we have two gentlemen right next to each other and we have the young sorry we have the young fred right here now uh, these paintings are made by the amazing mike papa he if you go to his instagram accounts you have more of this kind of art style which i highly enjoy but let's continue so the two gentlemen fred in the middle i think that that is that this is right after the titanic sinking and that these gentlemen are asking fred like what happened how did you sink a kind of inquiry um fred is holding his cap i think um I mean, it's a room, so I wouldn't notice something else. But like I said, I think that this scene is a kind of inquiry, like how did the Titanic sink again? Um, by the way, each, I hope that each of these paintings will make an appearance in the movie. But again, it's concept art. But I hope that each of these scenes will come in the movie. Uh, moving on. So right here we have the Frederick Fleet in his famous white star line uniform. If we look at his face, he looks frightened. So I think that this scene is right after uh, or right when the Titanic struck or just when he spotted the iceberg. But I mean, you can see in his face that he's scared as hell. Um, an amazing picture or an amazing painting once again. Now, if we go one down, this is Fred, I think, in his late 70s. And we see a kind of dark shaped uh, figure in cloud. So, if we go back to the director's uh, statement, um, exposure, drop frame motion, and the use of silhouettes and shadows. So the move is uh, the silhouettes and shadows. We can s clearly see it right here. Um, I think that Fred is having a PTSD attack and that he is seeing himself in uh, his white star lion uniform. Now, why do I say that? If we take a closer look at the, the top of his head, you can see a kind of something sticking out like a kind of overlap now if we go back to this painting right here you can 
kind of see the overlap right here. So here's a text of maybe White Star Line or RMS Titanic. And this overlaps right there. Now, this also again overlaps this, this point right here. So I think that he is having a PTSD attack and seeing himself, uh, that he's seeing himself in his White Star uniform. So that is that painting right here. He's getting out of bed and he sees that straight away. Frightening. Now, this painting right here, this one right here, this is one of my favorites. Um, you can just feel the emotion coming from the painting, in my opinion. So this is in the streets. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is in the streets. You can see firework going off from behind. Fred is again having a PTSD attack and you see some shadow, some ghostly figures running. So I've actually read saw a description underneath this and when the Titanics were going, when, when the Titanics, when the Titanic was sinking, uh, fireworks were launched. Now, um, here again, we see fireworks. So these fireworks trigger the PTSD attack which makes him think of the Titanic sinking with the children, women, men running for their lives and some of them even dying. So, um, again, this is one of my favorite paintings and not because it is a PTS, showing a PTSD attack. Let me try to explain this. Um, I want these PTSD attacks to be shown in the movie. It's of course, it's of course a tremendous bad uh, thing PTSD but this movie I hope this this movie showcases or I, I think this movie showcases the severity or I know that it showcases the severity of the PTSD attacks um, I'm trying to say words but I, I think I hope you know what I mean at least again English is not my first language but the basics fireworks makes him trigger his PTSD attack which takes him back to the Titanic sinking. So right here we have an other picture of Mr. Frederick Fleet. Now I don't know what to imagine or what this painting could be. Um, I think maybe in the backyard of his, of his uh, brother-in-law Philip, I'm not sure. Maybe this is in the later stages of his uh, final stages of his life or something like that but I don't think so because if you think if if you look closer at the picture he seems quite young still so I wouldn't know what this piece of art means but it still looks amazing now to the last painting to the last painting on our right we see Fred in the dark uh, so what I think is what this painting showcases is the severity of the PTSD, uh, not being able to talk to anyone, being alone, and being alone in the darkness. So this is, I think that this is Frederick Fleet in the final stages of his life, before he hung himself at the age of 77, which is quite sad um, to think about, not being able to talk to anyone. So, uh, by the way, of course, this project has a Kickstarter. I will leave a link to the Kickstarter and links to the social media of this project in the description below. And like I again said, I will show you or I will put a link to the Kickstarter in the comments below so you can donate uh, if you want, of course, every bit helps. But I will leave a link for the Kickstarter in the subscription. So Let's see, uh, we've had concept art, this is the main page, why now? Uh, meet the team! So right here, these are, uh, this is the whole team, so we are going one by one once again. So these are the writers and directors, as you can clearly see, Franklin and Marchetta. Now Ty the um, Titanic artist, uh, he actually had a podcast interviewing the writer and director Franklin and Mr. Marchetta. Uh, in that interview, you can, 
listen to the question of course he asks to them and their story on how they got to know each other on how they got to start the project Fred and the last name Marchetta it gives me an Italian vibe and as you all guys know I'm Italian myself and um, his, uh, his first name is Johnny Johnny Marchetta but when I heard if I heard correctly uh, his full name is Giovanni Marchetta and Giovanni is an Italian name uh, so Giovanni Marchetta and I was like I hope that the, I think one of them is Italian I mean it's the, for me it hits home then again because of course I myself am Italian but um, if it's true if he's Italian I think that's extremely cool but um Yes, I wanted to say that. So, Gina Burns, she is a producer of the project. Ashley Knight is the casting director. Then we go to Bri Ahmed. Bri Ahmed, I said, or I hope I said your name correctly. She will be the head of the art department. Then we have Johan Barrios, and he is the VFX supervisor and funder. TKFX. And right here, the historian and Titanic experts. We all know this man. Uh, he uh, was in the documentary Titanic Closed. And of course, we've read some of his books, like the 101 Things You Thought You Knew About the Titanic But Didn't, and uh, Titanic Minute by Minute. And of course, like I said earlier, he was also in the documentary. Uh, where is it? Titanic case closed. So we all know this man in the Titanic fandom. Uh, and it's, it's, it's extremely cool that he's also part of this project. Um, now we actually go on to the casts. Now, uh, Tom Brittany, he will play Frederick Fleet circa 1912. And when I looked at his face, he looked familiar. He looks very familiar. And would you know why? Now I will show you right now. We all know the movie Greyhound. With Tom Hanks. One of the most amazing movies I've ever seen. And Tom Brittany right here. He plays a role. He plays this guy. So um, Tom Brittany plays this guy. In the movie Greyhound. I found that so cool. He actually played with Tom Hanks. And he played in one of my favorite movies. And he also had quite an important role. He was one of the uh, bridge officers in the movie Greyhound. If I remember correctly. So um, that's just super cool to see that he will also be in this project. Um, you can see him once again. So that's quite cool. Uh, if we go back to meet the team, Mr. Max Beasley Sr. will play Frederick Fleet circa 1956. Now, I don't know him personally, but he was in Known for Shameless 2004, Looking for Eric 2009, and 3 slash 2 1 1978. Like I said, I haven't seen him personally but i'm sure he's a great actor now if we move to the next actress actress it is deborah stemson and she will play the daughter of frederick fleet now she is known for bad girls 1999 contraction street 2006 and the impression shows with Gushaw, kulsha and stevenson i don't know her also i know him but that's only because I recognized him in, like I said earlier, um, the Greyhound movie. But I'm sure all these actors are amazing. And I'm extremely hyped to see the performance in the, uh, in the movie. So, we've had that. Then we move to the last article. Cima cinematography and VFX. So let's read this once again. Taking inspiration from Rose Glass, St. Maud and Robert Edgers, The Witch, 
we are focusing on the obscurities and darker nature of how both films use cinematography to build tension and impact. impact. Breaking into the PTSD-ridden mindset of Fred, we will use key VFX and in, seminar and in camera techniques to paint Fred's perception of the world in certain moments. With slow exposure, drop frame motion of distinct characters, where people are almost seen faceless. And the use of, again, silhouettes and shadows for distrustful threats in unhinged characters. So maybe we will see some of uh, his PTSD attacks. Or, again, I hope I hope that we see them. But this uh, pretty much, in my opinion, uh, confirms it. VFX will also be an essential part of ensuring integrity of our period scenes, which will require some additional background building. For example, the Luca Tower on the Titanic will form both a partitional set built to the green screen, green screen background, pulling in the VFX to fill the infamous towering exhausts of the ship. Our final moment, seeing a close-up of the cast iron hole rip open against the iceberg, will also be complete GGI build for 3 to 4 seconds on the screen final. So we will actually see uh, the Titanic hit the iceberg, which again is, in my opinion, pretty cool. And of course, and it's also one of the scenes where Frederick screams like ice iceberg right ahead. So to see that also in this documentary, I keep saying documentary, I mean movie, will be amazing to see. We are selecting 4x3 frame ratio to complement the time period and to portray a slightly more claustrophobic state of mind for Fred. Adding further to his nostalgic motion picture, we plan on emulating a 35mm film stock look using vintage lenses on a large format digital camera. We are also meeting with Kodak on the possibility of a collaboration on this shoot to natively on 35mm film which would greater complement enthusiastic. So I hope I didn't butcher that once again. So um, that's a quickly rundown of the articles. Um, again, I wanted to show this in the stream, but it was so laggy that uh, it was horrendous to see in the stream. So that's why I'm doing this again in a video. Um, so I hope you are as hyped for this documentary, this uh, movie, I mean, as I am. I'm 100% sure that this movie will be amazing. Uh, again, I will leave a Kickstarter link in the description. So if you want to donate, please do. Uh, you can get some amazing things with it, if it works out. But um, I'm sure that this will work out and will be amazing. So please let me know in the comments down below what you think of this project. And I hope you got an understanding of the, what this project will be in this video. I will also leave a link to the podcast episode of uh, a Titanic artist, Time to Talk Titanic, uh, um, interview with the directors of Fred. I will leave a link to that as well so you can see it for yourself. So again, let me know in the comments if I helped you understand this story a little bit better. Kickstarter and social media will be in the description, of course. And uh, I quickly want to thank uh, the subscribers, of course, who have subscribed to my channel. That really means a lot. But, of course, we are now trying to reach the 500 subscribers. And I know we can do that together. So if you have friends who like ocean liners or uh, ships, please show them my channel. We are trying to reach 500 subscribers. So again, my friends, have a good night or day, wherever you are. And we will see each other on the next one. Goodbye.